Hello, good day. My name is Joshua Welsh, and I'll be taking you through another pure math tutorial. So today we'll be doing proof by mathematical induction. So from last episode, you remember we did sigma notation. So we did how x. So these are some of the um, summations from the last episode. Two of them. Just two examples, quick. And so as I explained last episode, mathematicians or anyone who uses a summation they really aren't going to like actually go from every number to check what's the total sum they won't go from like x is 1 x is 2 x is 3 used or to solve the summation what they'll mostly do is they will use the they will use the um, nth term to find they will use the nth term of the summation to find the answer so but how do we know how do mathematicians know that the nth term is true. Well, to do this, they have two options. Either they use exhaustion. Exhaustion, yeah. I think I showed in the other it video. It's um it's a technique that we don't use anymore because it's really long and boring. It would be like writing out each term like x is equal to one, x is equal to two, and so forth for this summation. And same thing for this. X for this when you do x is equal to 1 squared x is equal to 2 squared and so forth and then you would have to add them together and find the summation and that's how they would prove it's true or not but that's really long you would have to do that for about you would have to do it for hundreds of hundreds of times thousands of times to make sure that it's true so what mathematicians so discovered and that is may have discovered is proof by mathematical induction. So in this technique, in this proof, what they do is, well, this is a question. So we'll go, well, I will take you through the question, and by taking you through the question, you will understand the concept. So this is saying the summation of 2r minus 1, starting at 1 and ending at n, is equal to n squared. They want you to prove this. Step 1. For the exam is you have to write this equation. You have to say let Pn is equal to the summation of 2r minus 1. <coughs> because you need to give this um you need to give this for this side of the equation a name like Pn. So you could work with it later on. Then well this is really the meat of an induction. These are the hypotheses, that the uh, well assumptions of the induction. So basically, you pick a random case, k. You prove that if the k case is true, then the k plus one case is true, and if that is true, then any number is true for this situation. So before I go for forward, let me just say that some teachers do this differently. Some people, I will teach you how my teacher taught us it. And then it might look at the format like might look a bit different, but it's the same concept. And you'll get the marks either way. So what we say now is I just rewrote the line now. Pn is equal to the summation of 2r minus 1 is equal to n squared. Then we say, suppose Pn is true for some value of n is equal to k. So we're saying some on the number line, n will be equal to k. Somewhere along the line, the value the random value of n will be equal to the random value of k. So if we rewrite it as pk is equal to k squared, this is true. Okay, from here, sorry. From here we just change the n to k. Then if this is true, then we are required to prove RTP means required to prove that pk plus one is equal to k plus one squared. Which makes sense. I mean if this is the k term, then just add 1 to it, it should be true. But how do we prove this? What we realize is that pk plus 1 is really pk plus the k plus 1 term. How do we do this? So, well, we know what the pk, what pk is. We know pk is equal to k squared. So we, re -put, so we just substitute it in as k squared. What's the k plus 1 term? Well, the k plus 1 term has to be uh, this. 
it has to be this. Add it. it has to be this. You have to use the summation to find the k, k plus 1 term. So what we do is we add, so what's the summation again? 2r minus 1. So yeah, the summation is 2r minus 1. And all we do is we just substitute where, where you see r, you're substituting k plus 1. We substitute it in, you will get this equation, k plus k squared plus 2k plus 2 minus 1. You will get k squared plus 2k plus 1, and it ends up being k plus 1 all squared. This is done by factorizing it. Now, this is a part where I say that um, some teachers do it differently. Some p teachers do this whole part first, this part first, which makes sense. I mean, you need to, first, before you put, um, the point of this is you have to check and see both sides if the both sides equal to each other because you need to like start off with a base case to make sure that the proof makes sense however it doesn't make a difference because k will always if k gives you like a proof by induction question it will always be true so this is just a formality but some teachers do this first my teacher taught us to do it last so what they just do is take the base case as n is equal to 1, the left-hand side, substitute 1 in here, 2r minus 1 is equal to 1, if you substitute r is equal to 1, and right-hand side, substitute 1 inside. So we just substitute 1 into n, and you end up with 1 is equal to 1, so, this, so the base case is true. So we proved for the base case, and we proved for any value when n is equal to k so then we could say at the end pn is true for all values n is part of the sub part of the set of natural numbers so we'll try one more so they'll say prove by mathematical induction that the summation of r is equal to n divided by 2 times n plus 1 so how do we prove this? First step, you have to let p. Ooh, made a mistake there. It's not you're not supposed to bring in the n yet. So this is you're not supposed to bring in the k yet. So this is just n. So it's p. N is equal to the summation of r. Then we say suppose for some value n is equal to k. We substitute k inside and we will get p k is equal to k squared just using what it's equal to get k squared or oh, sorry k divided by 2 is equal to times k plus 1 then we're required to prove that p k plus 1 is equal to k plus 1 divided by 2 times k plus 2 just add 1 to it and tell me where anywhere where you see k change it to k plus 1 and you will get this. This means required to prove, remember that. So pk plus 1 will therefore be equal to pk plus the k, k plus 1 term. We know what pk is, we wrote it up here, so we substitute back in. And then what's the k plus 1 term? We so we use the um, summation to find that, so we, sub so we put it back into the summation as k plus 1 and we can get k plus 1 then what we do here is well for this what we had to do was factorize factor out factorize out k plus 1 divided by 2 from this equation so if you factor out k plus 2 this was the factor that we used to get that sorry k plus 1 we factor this out we get k See here, k, okay, and we're left with a 2 because if you multiply it back throughout, you would get a 2. You would get 1. I hope that makes sense. Let me say that over again. Um, yeah, k divided by 2, k plus 1, plus k plus 1. The factor we need to pull out, because remember the goal is to get the, what required to prove. So this is your goal in the exam. 
no matter what, you're trying to make it look like this. Because when you get this, you're right, you know you're correct. So we reach here, how do we factorize this? We pull out k plus 1 divided by 2 from the whole equation. We pull out it up, we pull it out k plus 1 divided by 2. And then what we're left with is k plus 2. Why? Because when you multiply this throughout, the 2 will cancel this 2 out, k plus 1 times 1 will give me this. Right. And we, at the end, we just use the base case to recheck to make sure this equation was true. And we get 1 is equal to 1. And pn is true for all values. n is part of the set of all natural numbers. Now, for the... Um, if you feel you can do this, you should try and uh, do this question. R, yeah, R is um, the summation of R3, wait, one, sorry, the summation of R times 3R minus 1 is equal to N squared times N plus 1. This one you should try to do. We will talk, we will, well, I will go through this question in the next episode and a couple more. And well, then we have to go to the other type of induction because induction does include sigma notation, but there is a branch of induction that does not include sigma and includes just proving stuff in general. So um, I hope this video is helpful. I will try to go through it slowly again in the next episode. And well, thank you for staying tuned. Hope you enjoy. See you next time.